In the 90s, a couple of scientists at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm got a strange idea. They wanted to make the biggest scale model of the solar system in the world. The Sweden Solar System Project started in 1998 by professors Nils Brenning and Justa Gahn, and they decided to use the Stockholm Globe Arena as the center of the model. The Globe Arena, now called Avicii Arena as of 2021, sticks out like a giant pimple in the southern parts of town. It's 110 meters in diameter, and that includes both the solar disk and the corona. The globe was a huge construction project, costing between 400 and 800 million Swedish crowns to build. And because of its unique architecture, it's included in the list of the seven wonders of Sweden. Given the size of the sun, how big do you think the planets are? Let's check out Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. Ah, here it is, Mercury, the planet closest to the Sun. You should know that, unless you've skipped school altogether. This model has a diameter of 25 centimeters, and it's located outside of the Stockholm City Museum, 2.9 kilometers north of the globe. Fun fact, the model is actually heated, so it's warm to the touch, and that symbolizes Mercury's closeness to the Sun. And the symbols on the support structure are supposed to represent things like orbital drift from Einstein's theory of relativity. Well, I don't think there's anything more to mention about Mercury, so let's move on. Outside of the House of Science in Stockholm, we find Venus. It's 62 centimeters big and 5.5 kilometers from the Sun. Surrounding Venus are five plates that describe different facts or features about the planet. For example, Venus as the morning star or the greenhouse effect on Venus. I like this plate. It has a lot of names for the goddess of love from different cultures. But they could have placed Venus in a little bit more of a romantic spot than this one. Welcome to the Swedish Museum of Natural History. It's an impressive building, an impressive museum, and you can find a small model of the Earth here. The model is 65 centimeters in diameter and is located 7.6 kilometers from the Sun. You know what the Earth is, I don't have to tell you anything more about that, but I can tell you that there's a model of the Moon here as well, 20 meters from the Earth. Just think about that. The model of the Earth is 65 centimeters and the moon is located 20 meters away from that. It's uh, further away than you think, isn't it? Mars, the red planet, can be found in a shopping mall in Mörby centrum. It has a diameter of 35 centimeters and is located 11.6 kilometers from the sun. Mars stands on a metal plate representing the Earth, and this is the connection we have with Mars, with the probes being sent there, and hopefully humans as well soon. The surface of Mars is covered with the chemical symbols of the elements that can be found on the planet. Or, well, that's what they say at least. It could be chicken scratchings for all I know. Jupiter is apparently a big ring in the ceiling at Arland Airport, north of Stockholm. It's supposed to be glowing, but um, apparently it's not. I'm not sure why. Saving energy or something. With a diameter of 7.1 meters, it's pretty big. But it pales in comparison with the Globe Arena we saw down south in Stockholm, 40 kilometers away from here. Jupiter's moons are here as well, in the correct scales. So this giant planet is in good company. But I'm not so sure that Jupiter enjoys spending time at an airport. No one likes being at an airport. And here, Jupiter has to stay all the rest of his days. This is the Celsius Square in Uppsala, 73 kilometers north of the Globe Arena. And uh, this is where I expect to find Saturn, I think. That little ball in the air is Saturn. It's not really how I expected it to be. I'm missing like a big ring or something. The square is named after Anders Celsius, a Swedish astronomer born here in 1701. Oh, did you see the bird flying by? <laughs> Thank you. 
This is the quaint little town of Lövsabruk, 130 kilometers north of Stockholm. And I'm here to find Uranus. Or Uranus. But no, I'm gonna call it Uranus. It's pretty hard to find Uranus. I had to search for quite a while and it's hidden away here in the back. <laughs> It really is hidden away. Look, there it is, behind this building, and the main road is way over there. I met a person, I, I asked for directions to Uranus. She didn't know where it was. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on now. We are now entering the far reaches of the solar system. Welcome to Söderhamn, 229 kilometers from Stockholm. And here you can find Neptune. Oh, look at this, a handy map. Here's Stockholm with uh, some of the planets. And then Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Uranus, and Neptune. This is where we are right now. But so we're not done yet. It's almost pitch black outside, but it's strangely fitting, as we are really far out into the cold emptiness of the solar system by now. We are in Delsbo, 300 kilometers north of Stockholm, and we're gonna have a look at Pluto and its biggest moon, Charon. Sorry for the lack of light, but here they are, Pluto and Charon. Let's have a look. Here's Pluto, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's the bigger one. And here's Charon, a little bit smaller. So, uh, I'm sorry you lost your status as a planet, Pluto. You're just a dwarf planet, but still, I like you anyway. I hope you enjoyed this little look at the Sweden solar system, the largest model of the solar system in the world. It's a fascinating journey to make, so if you're ever on a road trip in Sweden, I advise you to make a few detours to check out the planets. Well, that's about it for me. You like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.